uncle's garage in Linden, Washington. And today we're planning to get his 1954 Ford tractor started. This thing hasn't run in probably five, six years. We're gonna see if we can get it started. It's a beauty. We've just got a new battery for it. And we're gonna, so we're gonna put the new battery in it, put some new gas in the tank. Let's see if we can get it running. There is a rich history behind this tractor. And I'll have my uncle tell it to you perhaps later in the video. I'm not sure where he is right now. The tractor was purchased in 1954 by my uncle and his family as recent immigrants from Holland to Ontario, to the Holland Marsh area, north of Toronto. A number of years ago, he brought the tractor to the West Coast from Ontario in Canada, and here it sits in Linden, Washington. Before it came here to his garage, it sat or it was restored or painted at Avenue Machinery in Abbotsford, BC, which is just over the border from here. When the tractor spent time at Avenue Machinery, I'm not sure if they cleaned the tank out or if it's just completely dry from not having been used, but it's clean as a whistle inside and looks to be in really good shape outside. Well, here we are, folks. We have the proud owner of this tractor, Pastor John Van Hemert. Uncle John, please tell us, where did you buy this tractor in 1954? In 1954, it's a Jubilee tractor Ford, and it was bought by my father and myself, and we pooled our money together, we paid cash $1,850. And it was a, a tremendous machine. He did a, a lot of work, plowing and pulling stumps and and, and this was this was in 1954. No, let's see, yeah, 1954, and then the flood came in October of 54, and this tractor was in totally submerged in the water from Lake Simcoe, and so it was it was pulling an onion topper, and uh, and the machinery that goes with it. And then uh, it was uh, raining so much. And then that night it stormed and we didn't know what was happening. We didn't have the media, of course. And we found out the next morning that we had one huge ocean and there was no track to be seen. And it was totally submerged, correct? Yes. Now the cleat track was a yellow cleat track that we had, that, that the crawler, and it had a muffler over top of its hood. And that was about six, eight inches up, up on top of the water. And then the, the, the Canadian government stepped in eventually and they pulled all these tractors from all these farmers out of the Holland Marsh. And this was one of them. And th this is only about what, six months old. <laughs> it was unbelievable. Now, it had done a lot of work. Now, did the engine have to be rebuilt after it was submerged? Well, whatever has to be done, it was submerged. Uh, they, I think, that had it overhauled different different things, but they've all picked them up by a lot, a lot of tractor trailers, and we they couldn't use them anyway, of course, and they might as well go out there and get all the overhauled, and we would get it back again in the spring. And once it was overhauled, it worked again fine, and it's worked fine since that flood. That's correct. And after that that flood, then my dad and and, and Mr. Tenhaga, they got together and they said we might as well get this tractor working again. So they got me a job planting Christmas trees all through southern Ontario. So this tractor is pulling a, a, a planter and we would sit, my brother Harry and I had it changed to the seats and we would plant uh, Christmas trees. But for many uh, people out there from um, t uh, Toronto, they had these uh, farms, uh, hobby farms, and uh, they had, uh, it was St. Nicholas Evergreens and we kind of loaned ourselves out and uh, we we couldn't go home. We were way way up north or way out south, so we slept in the back of the truck, <laughs> and the tractor would have to wait. And we had the, the, all the tools with us. We had the, the gasoline with us. We had the plants with us, 
And so we were for most of the summer following, where well, we had work, lots of work. Well, so, it was not. It was actually later in the, in the fall. But way, way, no, it was in the spring of that spring. The, in the fall, we we had no tractor uh, there at all. Of course, we 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 were we, we were up, we were loaned we were loaned by my father and by Mr. Tanaka uh, to the Ontario Ontario Provincial Police. They needed um, assistance, police people or security people, to guard the 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 the, 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 the bridges all around the, the Holland Marsh. So this was a tremendous uh, opportunity for us to stay busy and do do something useful. You see, but the tractor came back to us, and with the following year, then uh, we went and used it again. Well, so this, this this tractor was, uh, of course, on, on the on the on the back of the truck was a three-ton truck, so it could be put up up on top of the wagon, and then yeah, we had this thing all over the place, and it always started. It was always there. It was a faithful vehicle. That of course we made sure that that we did the the, the procedures on it. But it was an excellent machine. Uncle John, how did the tractor get from Holland Marsh, Ontario, here to Linden, Washington? Well, yes, that's another little story. It became, it came here. See, my father passed away, I think it was in 1997, 1997. And when he passed away, then the, the brothers and sisters wanted to know what would they do with the tractor and of course they knew that I had my eye on it and so I bought the, the tractor back for about two thousand dollars and gave all my brothers and sisters about two hundred and twenty five dollars each so that they all got part of the tractor and I and I got the whole tractor <laughs> but they paid you know they I had to pay all them and Uncle John you have lots of brothers and sisters <laughs> you are the oldest of how many of uh, nine so 10 siblings all together. That's right. Quite something. And this tractor represents so much for the Van Hemert family. That's right. Great. So by the way, it was transported at some point then from Ontario to Abbotsford or yes. to Langley. Yes. And then it was brought to Avenue Machinery. And what did they do to well, it? We, we, we took it all the way across Canada and we rented a U-Haul and I, I moved the tractor with the blade. The blade is outside here. It's a, it's a blade that can plow and, and scrape, you know, it's, it's a beautiful piece of machinery. And uh, we just uh, lo loaded it up, went all the way through part of Canada and part of the United States, had a great time. I, I think we even went to Denver or something. We, somewhere we, we showed the kids that we were on the way and then we had that tractor on the back. And then we, we used it in mission. Ah. And there we had a, a little place in uh, in Hatsik, Hatsik Lake, and we did some plowing there. It was a kind of a hobby farm, <laughs> so we had a tractor there, and so that was really handy. So that good, um, <laughs> that faithful animal, <laughs> the faithful tractor would keep on uh, being among us. And so, Excellent. We were, so then, it from there when we sold the place, then we, the, the, in the main mission, then we we brought the tractor over here. But we first had it to do some work done on on it in Abbotsford. Excellent. And then you brought it from Abbotsford here to Linden. And how many years ago was that that it sat here? Well, Is that about five years, six years? Well, I, you know, you you were with me. I think it was five or six years yeah, ago. Yeah, about six years ago. Yeah, well, I'm not sure who's going to see this video, but I just mentioned earlier that there's a rich family history in this, yes. in this tractor, right. and that it's been sitting here for probably five years, and that uh, here it sits inside the garage in Linden, Washington, and we're going to try to get it started this evening. <laughs> so right. we've splashed a little fuel in that very clean fuel tank. The tractor itself looks spectacular. We've checked the radiator. It's got plenty of bright green fresh fluid the oil was must have been changed at avenue machinery it's it's as clear as honey it looks really good we're going to change the six volt battery out we'll do that in a moment and after that we're going to 
see if we can fire this baby up. Go at almost 97. He, he must have used about 30 years on his own little farm there, my, my dad. This tractor? Yeah, he uh -huh. used it about, he used it to, to, to put when he was nowhere on this earth. Yeah. He, he retired and he couldn't do so much in the outside. But he, uh, I, I think he used it about 30 years. And all the kids, all my brothers and sisters, all of them, they drove this tractor. And the, Even Jimmy drove his tractor because when they loaded potatoes or onions on the wagon from each side, yeah. then somebody had to wheel this tractor and they keep it straight, going straight. And then Jimmy, when he's four or five years old, he was also sitting on the tractor. Wow. All the girls, five girls, all had huge times of use driving on the tractor. And how about my other uncles, the Tenage brothers? Did they drive this tractor well, once in a while too? Well, that, that's right. That, that's right. The, the Tenage... The ten age after the see, but during the flood, of course, then we were all together on the farm, cultivating the farm and selling the produce and all that. Then we did all together, and we brought the produce to Toronto, and then we would uh, and the board worked for a guy called Hochreiter, and we had a, a we had a, a deal a deal that the the, the owner would get 40% and we, and we would get 60%. So it was a deal cropping. And that worked out pretty well. And the produce was a, a, a given that we always get, get rid of it and sell it. It went to Loblaws and Dominion stores in Toronto. And my dad would be in the truck and I would be in the truck and we'd take turns driving and stuff. Excellent. Yeah, that was a big deal. On the markets, it was a big deal. And did those Tenhaka brothers, uh, brothers-in-law, did they drive this tractor once in a while? When we were, that was the, before the flood they did. Got it. But not after the flood because then we separated. Ah. Uh -huh. I, I still remember how much money they got. I remember that we had to really strive and work for it. We had to go to Toronto to a lawyer. There were situations with, with the, the, the owner. The owner gave us a, some, somewhat a bad deal, but we got it all straightened out by, wow. by, by making sure that the, 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 fund, the funding would come to both families. And through all of this, the tractor prevailed. The tractor prevailed. C continued on faithfully. <laughs> Excellent. One, one other question, Uncle John. I don't know if you remember this, but I'm sure that your, uh, your in-laws would love to know this. Your father-in-law, Chosem Tenhaha, was he ever behind the wheel of this tractor? Well, no, he was not. Uh, uh, he... There were so many eager drivers. There were all these boys want to all drive a tractor, and so and also the cars. I got stories about cars. Oh, I bet. I had to had teach them to how to drive a tractor and how to drive a car, and so because that's all different, all strange. Of course. So yeah. it was a, a real, a, a tremendous opportunity for me to uh, to, to share my uh, what, what I could do and what, and what the tractor can do. Yeah. And it had a three-point hitch, so we could have could put a plow on there and then move it. Then we could have, we could put on the the grater or the the the, the blade and and move move dirt around. Excellent. And so they, what happened after the flood? We all went working for the Ontario Provincial Police. All the boys and Alpha Papnaha. Yeah. He was also on one of those bridges. <laughs> and Alpha and, and I, I all of a sudden got a job, I had to check them all up and then make sure that they get coffee and cook and sandwiches and so on. Yeah. And, and that they stayed awake. Yeah. And Tanaka had an idea of uh, the, the lay, lying down for a while in, in the back <laughs> of, the, of, the, of, the, of the car. And I said, Mr. Tanaka, you gotta watch who's coming. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh wow. Well, uh, by so, the way, for the list for the viewers who don't know, that would be a young man telling his future <laughs> father-in-law to stay awake and do his job. So, uh, <laughs> but I'm guessing if I know my 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 opa Tanaka that he probably had a creative way to probably sleep while watching. I'm sure. Or, <laughs> yeah, that's true. He said it was so cold. There was always two. There was probably Cor or Yope was out there as well, and uh, we did this for several months. And then they moved, I believe they moved to, uh, uh, right close to, to Georgetown. 
and then they moved away and they, they started to work in the, in the factory. Is this... all, all right, Uncle John is in the driver's seat. We, this thing has not run in many years. We're gonna check that everything's in the right place. I see there's a, I think the key here needs to be, I assume in the on position, Uncle John, looks like that's As usually. Yeah. And then I, I'm gonna come around the other side here. You want the, uh, the, 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 the that? Yeah. I see a leak on the other side. A leak? Yeah. I'm not sure what it is. Let me take a look. The mechanic sees everything. Yeah, let me see. Let me just hear. Oh, this is probably fuel. Oh, really? It looks red. Uh, another, I'm assuming that, yeah, no, that looks like there's a, uh, yeah, I just saw a little drip from the carburetor here, so. But I think we can probably run it. Hang on, let me just see what it's coming from. That's uh, okay. The float valve is... I think we can run it, Uncle John. We'll just uh, we'll deal with the leak later. That's probably why the tank was so completely empty. So let's go ahead. And... Just like 1954. <laughs> okay, let's. It doesn't go, go yet. Oh, it'll go. It I bet it'll go. I have no doubt. <laughs> How about if we give that starter a chance to cool down a little bit, and then... Uh, the fuel maybe it's, it's turned off? I'm gonna check. All right, it's about a week later, and we've done a little more work to the tractor, a little bit of fiddling with the carburetor, and now we think it's ready to run. Actually, we've fired it up already, so we know it's gonna run. Uncle John, would you please do the honors and fire it up like it's 1954? There we go. It runs like a champ. It runs like a champ. Again, nice to see after all those years that it runs so well. And as we've talked about earlier, quite a story behind the tractor. <laughs> yeah. Gift of the Lord. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it, it gave, put bread on, and butter on the table for us. For yeah. Two families. Spectacular. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. The produce went to Toronto's Loblaws and Dominion stores. And we had a certain way of getting rid of all the lettuce and carrots and onions because you see, the, the Hochreiter was the one that was at Loblaws to bring the produce there. So we were guaranteed that everything time, every, all the vegetables would go to Dominion and Loblaws. And we're thankful to God that he, he provided so early in our immigration 
such good things that we had a little bit of land, 65, 75 acres. And there was, of course, it was all, all rental and on the deal. But then comes this huge, it was rain, very rainy that, some, that summer. And it was, the water was level with the ditch. And it was muddy and the, the tractors had to pull the, the topper, the topper with two tractors, also a cleat track. And then the, uh, the, the whole thing was that we could get the onions uh, topped but it rained so much that one day in the 14th of October, and then all of a sudden there was a hurricane and we were still sleeping. We were on higher land. So I had just moved to higher land the week before. And the area where they came from was the, was the wettest and the highest, deepest water. So uh, the, the Lord saved uh, uh, actually us all. We moved out as well before, not knowing about the, uh, the water floods happening, but it happens. And so we were shocked, of course, that the whole tractor, the tractor was this far in the, in the, in the water. And then we, the, the, the government had about a thousand c c tractors to, to overhaul and work. And in the meantime, we got other work. And so we worked together at the Tanhas in such a beautiful way. It was wonderful. We were, we were adjacent to the Ontario Provincial Police. We had a guard, the, 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 the bridges, so that no, not, no, no stealing would, would happen. And so the Tanhas boys and the Fenheman boys and the fathers, we were all on duty 24 hours guarding <laughs> guarding the, the Mar Holland Marsh so it made sure that no one was going to be stealing anything and also that they were not sort of getting the, the, the onions out because they were all contaminated but some farmers would would not heed the, the government's call and so we had to make sure that they would not get these these products back into product or in going going, going into the facilities. So it was all in all a tremendous thing. And there was a saying, there was a saying, Here, geef ons ons dagelijks brood en af en toe een watersnoot. <laughs> Translate that into English, Uncle John. Well, <laughs> you see, the, 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 the flood was also a tremendous help in the, the, the money. They, 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 they gave us fund funding for the, uh, the amount of protest that we had and so we were uh, having, receiving some nice big checks from the government because they took it as a, as a, uh, a tremendous loss in, in the country. So there was fund funding from Ottawa, and so Tanaha got a check, and we got a check according to the amount of helpers we had. Ah. And so I was in on the dealing and wheeling. I was kind of translating between Tanaha and my, wife and my, my father. And so, and with the Hoch Riders. And so it so happened that I had the opportunity to even pick up the check after the flood. And the flood was, of course, a, a critical situation. But we got about $50 a week, I think, for each of the boys that were working to helping the Ontario Provincial Police. And, the, and, and, and somehow or another, I got a little job. I had to go to all the different bridges to bring them coffee. And then Mr. Tanaha was a little bit sleepy, and I had to wake him up and say, hey, Mr. Tanaha, <laughs> you got watch out, you got to be on guard. And say, oh, yeah, okay, that's fine. I'm not so long good that it's okay. It's amazing how the Lord provided each time. Yeah, yeah, because really. Because we had money coming in to put bread on the table, even though there was a disaster. Yeah. It's a big disaster. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, it was only 30 miles north of Toronto. And so we, 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 we the, the night before was very windy, and that's all we knew. We had no way, of, there was no power. So we drove up to the uh, area where the, where the farm was, by Federal Farms, uh, just below Bradford. And so we found out that it was one big ocean, and the water was everywhere. And so the Lord provided for us that we'd be okay. And that we also even had work. 
and so we had, had a job again too. And the tractor was fixed. We, we had three tractors. We had a tractor that was a Ford, and then the, we had a tractor that was a, an Oliver, uh, Oliver Cleet track with yellow. And then we had an orange Alice Chalmer, and that was our crop, our, our crop at 64 inches. That was our crop and seeder, the seeding the, the, the produce, yeah. and also also provided rotor tilling and so on for, with this little track. It's called the Alice Chalmer G G. And then of course, then we had to kind of part from the Tahakas and us because we were not going to do the chair cropping again. We're going to do other jobs, and the Sahara's got different jobs out in the Georgetown area, and they, they got good income from that. And my dad bought a little farm with that check, and so it was uh, 13 acres in Adams Norvell. And this tractor came along, of course, and the cleat truck, and so the, this tractor came along to to be, again serve in the way of bringing. The dude working the produce. So my father was, of course, very eager to get going and for a new year and then be on his own. That they call that for ons eigen werke, who need for an ander werke. So then he was very happy with that 13 acres and that house. There was a house that we lived close to. Dad always said it has to be close to school and church. So he found out, he found the place from Harry Horlings, and he could buy it with the money that we got from the flood. And so he, he was operating on his own. He built a little greenhouse, and the tractor was always around, grading and hauling and pulling stumps. It was an enormous thing. Wow. We, Shall we uh, start it up one more time, and then we'll wrap up the video? Yeah. Yes.